chosen to join us. Whether you're sitting in our congregation this morning or sitting in your home on your couch with your favorite mug, we hope you enjoy what we have in store for you. We have the privilege this morning to join together for communion with our church body. If you haven't prepared already, please do so while we worship. Good morning, church family. It's good to see you all here again this morning. I have a couple of other announcements just to add to what Kylie just said. Uh, you have communion cups in your chairs. Uh, these have two layers, okay? There's a very thin film right on top that gives you the bread if you haven't done it before. And then the second one's a little bit harder to get open, so make sure you handle it well so that it doesn't flick back on your suit or your nice shirt or your blouse or whatever. Uh, I will not be responsible, okay? All right. Also, October the 20th, mark these in your calendars, October the 20th at 7 p.m., uh, we are going to be having our long-awaited AGM, okay? It is late because uh, the restrictions came in before we could get our AGM off in March, and so we will be having that on the 20th of October at 7, and we will have registration for the first 100 people. Now, that's not usually an issue. We usually have, you know, around 90 92, maybe high 80s, so uh, we want you to make sure you register for that. And then also Sunday, October 18th, uh, we will be starting two services in the morning. The first will be at 9.30 a.m., and also the second will be at 11.30, okay? So keep those two times in, more, in mind, and when the registration comes up for you to register, it'll give an opportunity for the majority of our people to be able to register for that morning and be a part of a church service, one of the two, okay? So keep those two things in mind, and God bless. Let's worship with the worship team as they lead us in the presence of God. God bless you. Amen. We invite you to stand and join us in worship this morning. So good to see you again. Let's sing together. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all Everlasting arms What a 
fellowship, what a joy to find leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace of mind leaning on the everlasting arms. from all alarms leaning 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 on the everlasting arms oh how sweet and oh how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way leaning on the everlasting arms and oh Bright the path rose from day to day, leaning on the everlasting. Yeah. I'm leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all along. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms what have I to dread what have I to fear leaning on the everlasting arms oh I have blessed peace with my Lord so near leaning on the everlasting Amen. let's sing it leaning I'm leaving from all the lost leaning 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 on Amen. let's sing oh how sweet to walk and oh how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way leaning on the everlasting on and oh how bright the path Rose from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Yes, I'm leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. I'm leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting Sing our last verse together. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting on. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting I'm leaning. Safe and secure from all the loss I'm leaning, leaning Leaning on the everlasting arms Yes, I'm leaning, leaning Safe and secure from all the Everlasting us. Isn't that good? Can we sing that chorus? I heard that chorus sang another way once before. I don't know if you heard it this way, but it sings like this. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, safe and secure from all the Leaning on Jesus. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on the... Let's sing that one more time, church. Leaning on Jesus. We're leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus. Safe 
and secure from all along leaning on Jesus leaning on Jesus leaning on the everlasting love Amen, that sounds beautiful this morning let's continue to worship together sing water you turn into wine Water you turn into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you There's none like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you There's none like you Our God is greater Our God is stronger God, you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome in power Our God, our God Water you turn into wine. The water you turn into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. There's none like you. And into the darkness you shine. Out of the as we rise, there's no one like you. There's none like you. Amen. And our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. And our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us, and if our God is with us, what could stand against and if our God is for us then who could ever stop us and if our God is with us what could stand let's sing that again and if our God is for us then who could ever stop us and if our God is with us what could stand against and if our God is with us then could ever stop us and if our God is with us what could stand again? Oh. And our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God. Our God, let's sing it again, our God. And our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Let's sing that one more time. We testify this morning. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Amen. That's our testimony this morning. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we're going to look at the screens, and Silas Kohlhauser will be bringing us a scripture this morning. Welcome. 
I will be reading from th Psalms 139, 1 and 6, and 23 and 24. O Lord, you examine my heart. You know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I'm going to say, even before I say it. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessings on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Thank you. If you saw this, we're reading that scripture. I'd like to welcome uh, two new people up to the stage today. Uh, Phil Talk is on the bass, as well as Haley Penny is singing with us today. Isn't that great? Yeah. Amen. God's so good. We're so glad that they're here. And, and Phil's wife will be joining us as well on the worship team, Cheryl. And we had Leroy Freak, uh, for those who wondered who that strange guy was on the stage last week. But it's so good to have them on board a part of the team. Amen. I'll read just uh, Psalm 40. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord to help me. And he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of despair and out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground. And he steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing. Amen. A hymn of praise to our God. Amen. It's so good. And the church is such uh, alive and well in, in this world today. Amen. Not only do we have a full building, there's probably this many or more watching online and even more that are watched during this week that it is really a part of this church. And we're so glad to have them as a part of this church as well. We're going to sing. What a beautiful name it is this morning. We just uh, ask that you continue to worship with us this morning, whether you're here or home on your couch. Let's worship together. You were the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord most high. You're hidden glory in creation. Now revealed in you our Christ What a beautiful name it is What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus Christ my King What a beautiful name it is Nothing compares to this what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us, so Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater what could separate us now what a wonderful name it is what a wonderful name it is the name of Jesus Christ my King what a wonderful name it is nothing compares to this what a wonderful name is the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is the name of Jesus. And death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. He silenced the boast of sin and grace. The heavens are rolled, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. You have 
Death could not hold you. Death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. You silenced the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. You have no rival, you have no equal, now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory, yours is the name above all. What a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ my King. What a powerful name it is, nothing can stand against, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. I believe that many of us here this morning and many of us watching online uh, could testify to that fact. We can testify to that fact. Can we just stand? Can we just stand this morning and just give him all our worship, all our praise, all the honor that he's due? Amen. Let's sing that bridge out again. Amen. Let's sing that. Death could not hold you. Let's just worship this morning. Amen. Dig deep within our hearts. And if that's been a testimony of your life, I pray that you just worship. Let there be no distraction in this place. What happened maybe before the service, maybe this week, but whatever it is, let's give it to him and worship. Amen. Can we do that this morning? Death could not hold you. The veil tore before you, you silenced the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are rolling, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life. Uh, you have no rival, let's sing it, and you have no rival. You have no equal, now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory, yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is, and nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. 
Amen. We love you, Lord. And God, we lift our voice in this place. And even those watching at home, we lift our voice to the one who is worthy, the one who is holy. God, we thank you for that perfect and spotless lamb that was sacrificed on our behalf. You didn't want heaven without us, so Jesus, you brought heaven down. And we're so thankful, Lord. We give you all the worship, all the praise, and all the honor this morning. All the praise that you're due, God. We thank you, God, because whatever this week threw at us, we're still alive and well. And we're still able to praise you. We still have a breath in our lungs. And just that alone is worth giving you praise, Lord. Just that alone is giving you praise. It's worth giving you praise. God, I pray for those watching at home. Maybe they were sick and couldn't make it this morning. Maybe had some unexpected news. God, I pray that you would go before them this week. I pray that the words of your heart, the words, your word, God, that would be on their heart throughout this week and give them strength. Allow them to feel peace, God, in situations where they have feeling like nothing left, feeling hopeless, God. God, I thank you for the church. I thank you for the church that's alive and well. We can look around this world, God, and see all the restrictions and regulations, but it has not silenced the church. And it cannot silence the church because we thank you for your spirit that's dwelling within us, Lord. And I pray that that would be more vibrant than ever in these days. I pray that we would bring hope. We would be a source of hope by your spirit to generation upon generation. God, I thank you for this community. Help us to be a light to this community. God, I pray that this would be a a day that people would just come to you, come into your sanctuary and just learn who you are. I pray that there may be there distorted perspective of you would be just rearranged and they'd get a perfect sense of your presence God and you'd welcome them just like the prodigal the father of the prodigal who welcomed them with open arms God God I pray that the church would be a welcoming place to those who feel lost and hopeless who feel broken and hurt I pray that you would pour out your spirit in this coming day God And God, we sing right now that you're holy, holy, holy. God, we join in with heaven right now that you're holy, Lord. And we give you praise in all that we have. And God, as we worship, I want to take this time right now to pray for Pastor Brian as he's going to bring the word after this song. God, I pray that it would be so fresh and anointed as each week, Lord. That you would bring a new to us, God, creating us a clean heart, oh Lord, that we may receive it with pure hands and pure hearts. So God, we thank you for your church. We thank you for what you're doing through your church. We thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name, everybody said, I invite you to stay standing if you can, but we're going to sing, worthy is the lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is he. Amen. Let's sing together. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is he. Sing a new song. We sing a new song to him who sits on heaven's mercy. Let's sing that again. Worthy is the Lamb. And worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. We sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy. And holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. 
with all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything and I will adore you. Clothes and rainbows. Clothes and rainbows of living color. Flashes of lightning, rolls of thunder. Blessing and honor, strength and glory and power be to the only wise King. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Filled with wonder, awestruck wonder, at the mention of your name. Sing filled with wonder. Filled with wonder, awestruck wonder, at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power. Jesus, your name is power, breath and living water, such a marvelous mystery. Sing holy, holy. And holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. All creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything and I will adore you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything and I will adore you. Let me sing that third verse filled with wonder, awestruck wonder before Pastor Ryan comes this morning. Filled with wonder. Filled with wonder, awestruck wonder, at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath and living water, such a marvelous mystery. Holy. And holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. One more time, holy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. All creation, with all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything, 
and I will adore you. I need a lectern. Give me one of your stands. Good morning. No, we're not having a baby dedication this morning, but I just wanted to show off our newest grandson. He is a month old. He was born September the 5th. Three hours later, his mom and baby were home. Isn't he handsome? He looks just like me. He got more hair than I have. Yes, he does. What do you think, guys? He is handsome. He's a good baby. Okay, Dad, come up and get him. Mm-hmm. I like to hear him cry because he doesn't cry a whole lot. He fusses a little bit sometimes, but so his mom is afraid when I take him, I'm going to wake him up, which I usually do. That's our fourth grandchild. Not bad for being 40. Hey, it's not bad. I'm looking forward to our communion time together today. And uh, we haven't done this together for a long time. And it's always a special time to uh, share our fellowship meal together, even though it's not the type of meal that Newfoundlanders are used to, but it is a fellowship time that we share together. So I've been preparing this week, I've been reading the scripture that Silas read to us in Psalm 139, and it's really spoken to me, and I'm going to continue this message next week as well, and end off uh, this short two-part series. Growing up, even as a boy, I remember starting school in Twellingate. Newfoundland, and uh, it was always important, our parents would tell us and our teachers, to have a basic understanding of a, a few things. Math. Have a basic understanding of mathematics. As you got older, it was, you had to learn about gravity and f- basic physics, maybe, and some biology. And the reason why these basic elemental uh, uh, things that we have learned is important is that it helps us avoid pitfalls in life and it also helps us to progress in life through higher education which will help us uh, to make a good career choice hopefully. Now it is also important to know the person you're going to marry. There might be a couple here this morning that are planning on getting married so you might want to listen to this. I realize you cannot know every intricate detail about the person that you're going to marry before marriage. But it is necessary to know the important stuff. It's important to know their view on finances, practical things. What kind of expectations are they bringing into the marriage? What was their family relationships like? And there's a few others that you can add to that list. And just as it is important to understand some basics in life and to know more than a little about your future spouse before marriage, it is necessary to know who God is in order to have a good, deep, intimate relationship with Him. It's important to know the one who knows you. David is known as a man after God's own heart. Now don't get me wrong, he was far from perfect. He made lots of mistakes, committed lots of terrible acts, But he was always aware of the importance at the end of the day of having a strong relationship with God. And when he saw 
his wrongdoing, he would repent deeply and sorrowfully. He knew that without it, he would go astray. And he knew that with a relationship with God, at the end of the day, it would be a successful life. He had an understanding of who God is. And in Psalm 139, you will see what I mean. As I read this scripture and studied it, I was seeing a few things that spoke to me in my heart. So I went into a little deeper study and it confirmed what I was gleaning from the scripture. I noticed that David is telling us three very major important characteristics of God and he does it by breaking up this chapter into a few sections consisting of six verses each. One to six, seven to twelve, thirteen to eighteen. And in the first three sections he declares three things about God. Number one, he declares that God is, and this theological term that we would learn in Bible college, omniscient. Which means he's all-knowing. Do you know that God knows everything about you? Do you know that? Let me read it to you in the English Standard Version. It says, O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot contain it. And what David is saying here is that God has probed into his life. It was like God did a 3D imaging scan on his whole being. He, was, he has penetrated into his body, soul, and spirit and knew everything about him. God knew him intimately and deeply. And David understands that God knew every move he made and the motives behind, behind every move he made. When David said in verse 2 that God knew when he sat down and when he stood up, he was in essence saying that God knew about his whole day and the activities of that day. Isn't that something? <coughs> Excuse me. The verse that solidifies God's ability to know everything is found in verse 4. And it says, You know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. Before you, some of you may be quick to speak. We are all guilty of that sometimes. But the Lord knows what you're going to say even before you bring it out through those lips of yours. <coughs> if you study a little deeper into that verse, you will see it means that he knows completely what I am going to say even before I say it. Hebrews 4, 12 to 13 tells me, and it brought me to this scripture, that the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight. But all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. John 1 and 1 tells us that in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. It tells me here that the Word of God, who is God... Okay, get that. The Word of God, who is God, knows us deeply, speaks into us deeply, and then he, he exposes those things in our lives that keep us from having a fruitful relationship with Him. It will discern and discover the thoughts and intentions of my heart. It tells us that because the Word is truth, which means that God is truth, when he speaks to us, we cannot hide, but are exposed as if we were naked. Imagine that. Nothing is hidden from him when he speaks. When he speaks, the Spirit of God will allow every wall to be broken down, and we will be exposed. Now, let me say this, that being exposed is a very uncomfortable thing, isn't it? But God's desire is not just to, not to make us feel ashamed for the sake of making us feel ashamed. 
The reason for the exposure is for us to see ourselves in the light of His truth, His presence, His Word, and to draw us into a deeper relationship with Him. That's why He wants to expose the things that are not like Him in our lives. His ultimate goal is to bring us closer. So never feel like when I feel ashamed for something that I've done, you feel ashamed because the Word of God that's been uh, put deep within you as making you feel ashamed because God wants you to disrobe yourself of that and to be drawn into His presence again. That's God's ultimate goal for you. He knows where we are. He knows what we are doing. He knows what we are saying. He knows what we are thinking. He knows what we are going to speak even before we speak it. He knows my motives. He knows the how, who, what, why, and where of every one of us in this building and for those of you that are watching today by way of live stream. He doesn't expose us, as I said, uh, to make us feel ashamed, but to draw us into his presence. David could not fathom that. He says, that kind of knowledge, Lord, is too wonderful for me. It's too great for me to understand. You see, we can't understand the depth of this knowledge from the omniscient God, from the all-knowing one. But he all-knowing because he wants to protect us, but he also wants to to draw us into his presence, into his love. The second thing that David tells us, the second characteristic, is that God is omnipresent, or he is everywhere. Listen to what David says. Where shall I go from your spirit or your presence? Or where where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in the grave or Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall, what? Lead me. Your hand won't slap me on the back of the head and say, smarten up, it will lead me. It may not be, it could be a shepherd's staff that will draw you back, but he will lead you. And your right hand will hold me up. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as day, for darkness is as light with you. Once David said that his all-knowing God was too much for him to understand, and then he realizes this, that he could never escape from God no matter where he went. Whether it's heaven, or in the place of the dead, or take flight and travel as fast as light, or go to the remotest island in the farthest ocean, or if I ask the darkness to cover me and the light around me to become night, even that won't work because darkness and light are all the same to him. Why? Why is that true? Because the Word of God tells us that He is the light of the world. And because of that, He dispels darkness, right? That's why darkness is, and light is all the same to Him. So wherever and whenever we come into contact with this light, this day star that has shone upon us, and then darkness is distinguished. So wherever He comes, if He comes into your life, you won't see darkness anymore it'll be his light, the light of his presence. That may be bad news for those who are trying to hide away from God, but to those who are lost and looking to be found, to those who are up to their neck in trouble, to those who cannot see their way out of their situation, this is good news. No matter where you are today and what you are going through today, God knows you. He knows everything about you. He knew you even before, and we'll get to that in a moment, you were born. Amazing. No matter where you are today and what you are going through, He knows you and God sees you and is there, and, and is there with you right now. If you call upon Him, He will hear you and He'll rescue you from your troubles. Where can I go from your presence? And David listed all out. 
He could have just said, I can't go anywhere. There's nowhere I can't go. But your presence is there. Salmon says in verse 10, Even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me up. Some of you here today have felt that over the past few months. Maybe it's just because of COVID and you've been shut in for most of the time and you've been a little bit scared. There's been, uh, you know, some fear there because of what's going on with the COVID thing. But some of you have gone through some deep waters of sickness and sorrow, but you've proven and you are thankful that there is nowhere you can go from His presence. He says, even there, your right hand will hold me up. It will sustain me. Even where? When you're in a place and you feel you can't go any further. When you're at the bottom and you can't see your way uh, out of it. When you feel crushed by the weight of your burdens and struggles. He says, even there, your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I'm so thankful for that today. And finally... We see that God is omnipotent or all-powerful. Listen to this. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. Now, when it says knitted, that doesn't mean that he just slapped you together. That means he, he gave it detail. He took time to make detail in with you and in you. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. Say it with me. I'm wonderfully made. Say I'm wonderful. Now don't get too puffed up. It's because of what God has done for you. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, Lord. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret. Intricately intricately woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. Amazing. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. If I could count them, They are more than the sand. And when I awake, I am still with you. In verses 13, verse 13, this six verses of the psalm starts with the word for, for you formed, which tells us that this section here explains the previous two sections of the psalm. A.P. Ross said that since God can create a person, he certainly knows him intimately and is with him everywhere. This section starts by expressing how powerful God is in that he created David, formed all the intricate parts of his body, and knit him together in his mother's womb. The New Bible Commentary says, How is it that the Lord knows and surrounds me? Because from conception and gestation through the days of life on to awaking in eternity, he is my creator, possessor. Created, in verse 13, is a verb which means to acquire a possession. And in the case of the Lord and the created order, it means to enjoy creative possession. So, he be, I belong to Him. He says, you've formed my inward parts, or my inward organs, the seat of my emotion also, which is where my feelings are. You formed all of that, whether it's the inward organs or what's within me that makes me feel and become an emotional being. You knew my frame, which is the skeletal structure, a create, or, or the physical being of us. And then he said, you, you uh, saw my unformed body, which was just the embryo. Every embryo is a person today. I'd like, I, I don't speak a lot on this, but I'd like to tell you that today and remind you, no matter what a society tells us and, and experts tell us uh, that uh, the embryo is not a person, this Bible tells me that the embryo God created and had a plan for him or her even be when he was an embryo. Amen? 
Every embryo is a person, a creative possession of God, this commentator says, with days planned ahead. A life ordained in heaven to be lived on earth. Isn't that wonderful? But that's not all. There's still eternity. Because verse 18, David says, When I awake, when I awake from death, I am still with you. So not only do I live here on earth my 70 uh, years or so, but when I die, I will wake up in your presence. What a hope we have today. So what do we know today? I'll ask you musicians to come back. What do we know? We know that we cannot hide from God. There is nowhere in this world that we can go that God's presence is not there. Now this is not bad news, as I said earlier. This is good news. And for you who are struggling along in this life and you feel like no one sees you, you feel that you are invisible to the world around you, and you felt all of your life that no one cares, and you feel so alone, I want to say to you today that Jesus knows. Jesus knows. Jesus knows. He knows about you. He understands. And He cares for you. He is waiting for you to recognize Him for who He is. The (laughs) all-knowing. Amen? The one who's, wherever you are today, He's there. And the one who has all power and is able to lift you out of those circumstances. He is God. He is your Savior. You need to recognize Him as your personal Lord and Savior. He's the God who knows all things, present everywhere, and is all-powerful. And created every intricate detail of you before you were born. He loved you enough that He took the time to form you. And after you were born, to have a divine plan for your life. That precious little boy, little Levi has a plan. God has it all laid out for him. And he'll use the parents to to begin to set him up until he gets old enough to be able to make his own decisions. And the setup is important. And then when he gets out on his own, he'll know which is the right road to take and which is the wrong road to take. And then the decision will be there. But no matter what decision they make, God's plan never changes for them. Never. He formed you. You may have not found out what that plan is yet. You may have wandered away from God all your life. And you don't know what the plan is. You may have not found out what it is yet, but the good news is that you can begin to find out what it is today. Because He's never left you. He's always been waiting for you to call upon Him. He's been there. He's been your stone of stumbling and your rock of offense. You wake up in the morning and you sense that there's something better to life. So you've got to make a choice every day to sidestep Him and to go on your own way that you've gone all your life. You stumble over him every day until you make the choice to say, Lord, I've done it all that I can do. I've went everywhere that I can go, and I'm still not satisfied. Well, the all-powerful, all-knowing, and the everywhere present God is waiting for you to come and call upon him today. The prophet Jeremiah says that part of that plan God has for you is to give you hope and the future the presence in his presence with him walking by your side so I would ask that you would invite Jesus Christ into your life today and you can by praying this very simple prayer as we bow our heads together if you're listening in your home today and you sense God's presence there drawing you to pray this prayer you pray it with me dear Lord Jesus I recognize you as my Lord and Savior I invite you into my life and I ask that you give me hope and a future. In Jesus' name I pray. 
Amen. If you've made that decision, let us know, will you? It's an honor and a privilege to serve you each week on our online services. We are so grateful and thankful for each and every one of you. We hope you have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next week.